a New York City hotspot where you can spot a celebrity enjoying carbonara. A row home in Philadelphia where you can find mouth-watering handmade pasta. Here are the best places for Italian food in the United States. Opened in 1937 by Croatian immigrant Auntie Tony Rodin, Original Joe's began as a 14-stool counter service joint in San Francisco's Tenderloin neighborhood. Now, it is as much a part of the city's fabric as the Golden Gate Bridge. It has even been dedicated its own day in the city. Original Joe's Day on January 26th. It would be easy to write this restaurant off as another tourist trap, but you'd be wrong. Through its many incarnations, evolutions, and locations, one thing remains the same. Original Joe's menu features the best of Italian-American favorites, including chicken parmigiana, some house specialty steaks, chops, and the Joe's famous hamburger sandwich. In its 100-year operation, the restaurant has always been first-come, first-serve, so run, don't walk, to this iconic location. For more premium food close to your favorite tourist attractions, look no further than Bicha Ristorante. Your stomach and wallet might be tempted by the drool-inducing foodie creations at Universal Orlando, but for the best food experience, you'll have to take a short boat ride to one of the property's official resorts. The Lowe's Portofino Bay Hotel at Universal Orlando is a breathtaking waterside property, reminiscent of the Italian seaside village of Portofino. Bicha Ristorante is the property's signature dining experience. The restaurant is a part of the upscale Milan-based chain, known for serving classic northern Italian eats in elevated settings. The atmosphere is downright romantic, and the food is inspired. Open nightly for dinner only, highlights from their menu include a 16-month aged parma prosciutto and a downright sinful raw wagyu beef tartare. But their handcrafted pastas are an absolute must especially their signature cappellaccio. These little hat pastas are filled with braised beef short rib, spinach, and fresh mushrooms, and are topped with a decadent marsala cream sauce. There are few restaurants in the world that hold as much esteem and lore as Carbone. The original outpost in New York City's Greenwich Village neighborhood serves as a hotspot for Manhattan's who's who. But catching a glimpse of Carbone's A-list clientele isn't the only reason to book that reservation. Run by one of the most successful restaurant groups in New York, according to the infatuation, the food does indeed live up to the hype. We just hope your wallet can keep up with your stomach's demands. If you can make your way inside its storied walls, you'll be dazzled by its mouth-watering menu and glitzy ambiance. The menu is vast, but you should absolutely order their famous spicy rigatoni vodka. At over $30, we promise you it's worth it. Also of note are their gigantic meatballs and the $72 veal parmesan. Think of it as dinner and a show. Helmed by chef Nancy Silverton, the James Beard award-winning mind credited with popularizing sourdough bread in the United States, Osteria Mozza is a hallmark in Los Angeles. Earning praise even from the hard-to-please Michelin Guide, Osteria Mozza is like a love letter to Italy. Its cozy setting is adorned with modern yet rustic finishings without the least bit of pretentiousness. The menu reads like a rustic fantasy. You should definitely take a peek at the gnocchi with duck ragu, but it's the art of cheese, specifically their mozzarella bar, that is the true standout. The white marble bar is where you can find Chef Silverton's beautiful dairy masterpieces, from cream-filled burrata to ricotta and fresh mozzarella. There are now two additional outposts in Los Cabos and Singapore, but the doors on sleek Melrose Avenue continue to beckon in locals and visiting foodies alike. Located in Manhattan's Harlem neighborhood, Reos has been wowing its clients for over a century and has been run by four generations of the same family. The food here is created from recipes passed down through generations and inspired by the greatest exports from southern Italy. If you can get a reservation, although it's nearly impossible, you won't find any menus. Instead, a personally curated experience will be yours to enjoy.
your server will ask you about what you like to eat and craft a multi-course dinner just for you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Mmm. Seriously, that is unbelievable. With the smell of fresh simmering garlic wafting throughout the restaurant, guests here have been visiting for decades to feast on their seafood salad packed with lobster and pasta sitting in the freshest clam sauce, red sauce, oleo, or whatever their hearts desire. One of Vegas's best kept secrets is Batista's Hole in the Wall. Tucked away on the backside of the strip, this longtime Vegas mainstay has been serving hundreds of patrons each night since 1970. The food is as fantastic as the old school Vegas atmosphere, with walls full of celebrity and sports memorabilia. A surprising little perk that first brought us to their doors free wine. Yep, you read that correctly. Every single meal begins with complimentary house wine. But that's not all. You also get salad or a minestrone, garlic bread, a side of pasta, and a cappuccino with your entree. Our favorites from the menu include linguine with chopped clams and a classic chicken alfredo. Many entrees are under $30, even with all the free stuff. If you are looking to let the good times roll in Vegas without obliterating your bank account, this is the spot. Chef and restaurant owner Mark Vetri made a name for himself beyond his hometown of Philadelphia when he opened Vetri Cucina. Just one year after this first business opening in 1998, Chef Vetri was named one of the 10 best new chefs by Food & Wine magazine. The restaurant went on to win Best Chef Mid-Atlantic in the 2005 James Beard Awards. Vetri Cucina's Yelp page is full of glowing, novel-length five-star reviews. More than one person says it was the best meal of their entire lives. Need we say more? Bon Appetit described Vetri as a groundbreaking restaurant and even attributed the trend of handmade pasta craft to Vetri's innovation. If you go, expect to spend a lot. The current prefix menu is $150 for antipasta, pasta, secondi, and dessert. Oh, you know, I'm not that much of a sweet tooth. Oh, oh my god, so creamy. Oh. According to a 2022 menu, this meal could include classic Italian ingredients like prosciutto di parma or pastrami, dressed up as a part of a series of extravagant, experimental dishes. Vetri Cucina is disguised as a traditional Philly-style row house, meaning this restaurant might blend right into the street at first glance. But its unassuming exterior hides deliciousness within. Sorrel is a one Michelin star restaurant in sunny San Francisco. Its chef, Alexander Hong, was nominated for the James Beard Foundation's Rising Star Chef of the Year Award in 2019. The restaurant is typically described as Cal Italian. According to Sorrel's website, that means local Californian-inspired cuisine with authentic and vibrant Italian influences. The California side puts an emphasis on utilizing local, organic, seasonal produce, and the menu is full of recognizable Italian items like raviolo all'ovo, a large pasta pocket filled with whole egg yolks. However, these dishes may not be so recognizable when you first see them. Sorrel's dishes are plated like works of art. Time Out San Francisco raves about the excellence of Sorrel's pasta and the infatuation describes Sorrel as a place to go to impress your fellow dinner guests, if you can afford it. The tasting menu is $165 per person, with an additional $95 upcharge for a seasonal wine pairing. If you're looking forward to a very special occasion in San Fran, Sorrel might just be the place for you. Brooklyn's Francie just opened in December 2020, but it already has one Michelin star. Located on a street corner in the heart of Williamsburg, Francie is more welcoming than other upscale Italian restaurants. The neighborhood eatery strives to project casual energy, inviting diners to feel right at home. The Michelin Guide tells Francie customers to expect a series of gratifying plates. The menu here is more affordable than some others on this list, with a snack section featuring relatively cheap bites. The dishes are twists on Italian favorites like bomboloni, duck mortadella, and Roman army sourdough. The mains are more expensive, but made to share. 
The New York Times gave Francie a glowing review as well, noting that Chef Chris Cipolloni is an expert at crafting Italian flavors. The Times recommends getting the dry-aged crown of duck if you visit. SPQR is an Italian restaurant in San Francisco that's become one of the best in the U.S. since opening in 2007. The name is an acronym for the official slogan of the Roman Empire, Senatus Papalusque Romanus, which translates to The People and Senate of Rome. Michelin awarded the restaurant its first star in 2012. The guide says the space is modern and that the Roman food shows a definite California influence. But for all its contemporary qualities, there's also an appreciation for traditional Italian food at the restaurant. SPQR and chef Matthew Accarino have been semi-finalists at the James Beard Awards multiple times. The tasting menu is on the affordable side — $88 or $95 per person for a five-course meal. You'll also be able to get a glass of wine for under $10, which is a steal compared to some other Michelin-starred eateries. Additionally, the minimum gratuity added to your bill is only 8%. Masseria in Washington, D.C. is an award-winning restaurant with some of the country's best Italian food. Masseria serves Pugliese food, cuisine inspired by the southern Italian region of Puglia. Located at the heel of the boot-shaped country, this region is known for breads like focaccia and pastas like orecchiette, according to the Travel magazine. Condé Nast Traveler says Masseria is ideal for a date night. Even the Obamas have visited the restaurant to do just that. Tasting Table agrees that it's one of the best romantic restaurants in our nation's capital city. You want people to be taken care of. You want them to be pampered and nurtured and just kind of feel like they've been your true guest for the evening as they leave the restaurant. The Michelin Guide gives it one star, calling its focaccia sinfully delicious and complimenting the business's lively atmosphere. This DC eatery's menu changes often so it's hard to say what will be provided at any given time. However, you should be able to get the six-course tasting menu when you go. According to Yelp reviews, you should expect a very pricey dinner that should be saved for very special occasions. Manhattan's Don Angie is a celebrated NYC restaurant serving a contemporary take on Italian-American food inspired by its founder's family history. Originally started as a speakeasy restaurant project in the East Village, the intimate West Village eatery seats only 19 people. But the small size hasn't stopped the founders, husband and wife team Scott Tassinelli and Angie Rito, from growing a strong reputation for amazing food. Tassinelli and Rito are each two-time James Beard Award semi-finalists. Don Angie also has one Michelin star. The Michelin Guide calls the modest space a darling of a dining room. The menu prices are easier to stomach than others, but reservations are nearly impossible to come by. Eater says your best bet is to try to get a walk-in reservation if you're comfortable with waiting for around 45 minutes. The Infatuation recommends the chrysanthemum salad, a twist on the classic Caesar, and the lasagna for two. Whatever you get at Don Angie, you can expect a delicious meal with creatively reimagined dishes. In Chicago, Monteverde's cooking has risen to the top tier of American Italian food. Chef Sarah Gruenberg won Best Chef Great Lakes from James Beard in 2017, and the Italian restaurant is still serving incredible dishes today. Chef Gruenberg has brought her restaurant many accolades since Monteverde opened in 2015. One of the most impressive was her win on Beef Bobby Flay with her signature chicken parmesan. Everyone says my chicken parm recipe is the best one they ever tasted, but let's see what you can do. You ready to do this? I'm ready. If you want to taste the winning dish, you can order a whole bird chicken parm on Monteverde's dinner menu. Pasta is the centerpiece of any meal at Monteverde. According to the Chicago Tribune, you can see chefs hand rolling and shaping your pasta from your table. The menu offers up Italian flavors and sauces you've probably tasted in your home kitchen, such as pomodoro, pesto, and imbrodo, or in broth. Customers love Monteverde, according to the restaurant's Yelp page. The business has nearly a thousand reviews that average four and a half stars. Per these reviews, the service is impeccable 
and the Italian food is spot on. Acquarello is the only Italian food restaurant in the U.S. with two Michelin stars, as of 2022. There are only 36 restaurants in the entire country with two stars. The Michelin Guide describes this San Francisco restaurant as a refined dining room with avant-garde dishes. This Italian restaurant is also a two-time James Beard Award nominee and a five-time semi-finalist. With those nominations coming as early as 2008 and as recently as 2016, you can tell Acquarello has stayed on the mind of the culinary world. As Tasting Table put it, Acquarello continues to serve some of the city's finest Italian food more than 20 years after its debut. Prices are on the more outrageous end of our cost spectrum. SF Gate called it very expensive. However, the different menus are specialized, allowing you to focus on vegetables, seasonal ingredients, or even white truffles. If you're not ready to splurge at this level, and we don't blame you, you can get a glimpse of Acquarello on its lively Instagram page, or catch Chef Suzette Gresham on a recent episode of Master Chef. Your time starts when Suzette starts. Over to you. Please listen, look, and cook. Here we go. Marea is another high-end white tablecloth Manhattan eatery. It has one Michelin star and was recognized by James Beard in 2010 when it won Best New Restaurant. This eatery is similar to many other top Italian spots in the U.S. in that it highlights homemade pasta dishes and specializes in seafood. On its website, Marea advertises its whole fish preparations, oysters, and crudo, or raw fish. Marea's outstanding food has earned accolades from the New York Times, which called Marea a superb restaurant and praised the chef for the food's bold flavors. Yelp reviews of Marea are outstanding. Lobster dishes are frequently mentioned in four or five star reviews. If you want to listen to these folks, get one of the three lobster plates. The Asticha Antipasto with Nova Scotia lobster and burrata cheese, Pansati, a squid ink lobster ravioli, or Aragasta, a grilled lobster dish. New Orleans Dominica seems to be on the casual side at first. There isn't a looming Michelin star putting extra pressure on diners and staff. However, the dishes offered at Dominica are just as elegant. The James Beard Foundation agreed, giving chef Alon Shaya the Best Chef South Award in 2015. The New Orleans Tourism website recommends Domenica as well as its home, the Roosevelt Hotel. Reviews on Yelp are, for the most part, outstanding, describing Domenica as the best pizza this side of Naples. Guests are offered a wide variety of meats and cheeses. Meat eaters may sample traditional Italian charcuterie meats such as prosciutto, aged 12 months, or copa, a six-month aged pork shoulder. There are three different categories of cheese, soft, hard, or blue, to suit your palate. Following that, you can move on to additional pasta, pizza, and meat entree dishes. First things first, this is a restaurant located inside a Gucci store in Beverly Hills. Massimo Bottura, whose name is prominently included in the restaurant's name, is one of the most talented and well-known chefs in the world. Gucci Asteria de Massimo Bottura is certainly vying to become the most coveted Italian eatery in America. And they seem to be succeeding. It was granted one Michelin star in 2021, just one year after it opened its doors. It is also Bottura's first U.S. restaurant. While it's too soon to say if his L.A. business will reach the three-star status of his other business, Asteria Francescana, the Michelin Guide calls the food at once whimsical and grounded. Like other Los Angeles restaurants, this business advertises its use of both California ingredients and Italian recipes, Vogue explains. Compared to other top Cal Italian restaurants, you'll see an even smaller amount of food on your plate. If you order the Insulata di Mare, or seafood salad, you are not going to get a mass of shrimp and cream sauce on your plate. The tiny dishes are so small, they look like they've been arranged with toothpicks. It's a red and white heirloom red bean pasta with an imported Tuscan walnut herb sauce infused with shaved heritage Pecorino Romano. What, you're done? Gucci Asteria de Massimo Bottura 
offers five, seven, and nine course dinner tasting menus, ranging from $150 to $275 per person. After you hit the Gucci store, cross the border into Arizona and you'll find Pizzeria Bianco. It doesn't have a Michelin star, but its chef owner Chris Bianco took home the James Beard Award for Best Chef Southwest in 2003. Bianco's reputation for making each pizza by hand has earned his eatery national acclaim. Pre-pandemic, this led to three-hour waits for food, according to Tasting Table. The New York Times even called Bianco's pizza the best in America. Six Neapolitan-style pizzas form the foundation of the menu, marinara, margarita, the sunny boy with salami and olives, the Bianco Verde with ricotta and arugula, the wise guy with onion and fennel sausage, and the rosa with red onion, parmigiano reggiano, rosemary, and pistachios. The eateries Yelp page is full of reviews from loyal regulars who swear by Bianco's Pizza. If you're in the Southwest and you can stand to wait a few hours, this Italian spot is worth a stop. If you're noticing a lot of San Francisco on this list, you are paying attention. Quince is one of five top-notch Bay Area Italian restaurants included in this roundup. This restaurant even outdoes Acquarello's two Michelin stars. It has an astounding three, in addition to one Michelin green star. Quince is one of only 13 American restaurants to earn three stars. It is considered by the guide to be a contemporary Californian restaurant, not Italian. However, the restaurant's website explains that Quince has Italian influences. Per Quince's Instagram, the restaurant serves dishes like pasta with tartuffi bianchi, a kind of Italian white truffle. They also incorporate fennel into desserts and make a seemingly caprese-inspired dish of cherry tomatoes, pine nuts, and arugula. None of these dishes may be available today. Quince's menus change on a daily basis. Just listen to this glowing review from SFGate. They called the atmosphere and service of Quince supporting players to Michael Tusk's menu, which unfolds like Mozart's Paris Symphony. Nostrana is a Portland-based restaurant with a positive fan base and seven James Beard Award nominations. Oregon Live called it the neighborhood Italian restaurant you've been dreaming of. And the infatuation said it was a wise elder of Portland's Italian restaurants. This spot serves up classic food that thrills the surrounding community. That's probably why the restaurant founders named their business Nostrana. It translates to local in Italian. Italian favorites like arancini, grilled octopus, rigatoni ragu, and beef tagliata all make appearances on Nostrana's menu. For dessert, you can order a seasonal fruit crisp at the beginning of your meal to enjoy once you've finished the main courses. It takes that long to craft. Overall, there's a lot of variety and ample opportunities for sharing. At Oregon's Nostrana, you'll get a more affordable meal and you might leave more stuff than at the other top Italian restaurants in America. Minneapolis, Minnesota is home to Bar La Grassa. The classic Italian eatery opened in 2009 and quickly found its share of national and local recognition. In 2010, Bar La Grassa was a James Beard Foundation semi-finalist for the Best New Restaurant Award. Bar La Grassa is one of those locally beloved eateries that's been able to remain open for over a decade. The restaurant's classic Italian menu is a big part of its success. You'll find recognizable dishes like pappardelle with veal ragu, spaghetti carbonara, prosciutto di parma, and pasta nera, squid ink pasta with mussels. There are also more Italian-American options such as Caesar salad, fettuccine alfredo, and meatballs. Bar La Grassa also offers several different varieties of bruschetta. One of the most social media famous restaurants on this list is Lilia. The Brooklyn restaurant, known for its pastas, has over 100,000 followers on its Instagram account. Lilia is also a newer restaurant. The doors opened in 2016, and it still hasn't been awarded a Michelin star. Diners on the restaurant's Reddit thread have debated why that is, and they're not the first to entertain that question. In 2017, Eater called it an underrated gem. 
Still, Lilia has garnered a lot of positive attention. Chef Missy Robbins was awarded Best Chef New York City by the James Beard Foundation in 2018. Their work is worth wow. it. Wow, wow, that smile. <laughs> I think we just found your favorite. The largest and maybe most popular component of Lilia's dining experience is the pasta. As the New York Times wrote, Lilia's menu has many other very good things, but pasta made by Ms. Robbins is a direct route to happiness. You'll find an array of classic Italian pasta shapes in this menu section, like rigatoni, malfadini, and tortellini. All of Lilia's pastas are handmade cooked with fresh ingredients and thrown together with only a few toppings to emphasize simplicity. Many of the positive reviews on Yelp give it four instead of five stars. Lilia does some specific things that please most people, but rub others the wrong way. One reviewer warns that there is Parmesan cheese on everything. So if parm isn't your thing, this is not the Italian restaurant for you. St. Cecilia, a restaurant located in Atlanta, Georgia, describes itself as a coastal European restaurant. All of the European countries lay before me. Where should I fly to first? <laughs> Although the menu appears classically Italian, with titles like Salumi e Formaggi and Pasta e Riso, the restaurant puts a twist on this with its use of local southern ingredients and an emphasis on seafood. Although it's mostly an Italian restaurant, St. Cecilia's pan-European branding seems to be working out well. Travel and Leisure called it a popular gathering spot for the after-work crowd. Atlanta Magazine described it as a place that brings in throngs and mobs. Per eater, St. Cecilia can accommodate 160 people in a particularly large and endlessly attractive dining room. The James Beard Foundation gave St. Cecilia the 2017 award for Outstanding Restaurant Design. Of course, large restaurants take on a certain risk. Reviews for St. Cecilia are mostly positive, but call the place lively at its best and noisy at its worst. Cafe Juanita is the only Italian restaurant on this list not located in a major U.S. city, so it's really an attention grabber. The restaurant is located in Kirkland, Washington, a suburb of Seattle. Café Juanita and founder Chef Holly Smith have both been nominated for multiple James Beard Awards, and Smith was the 2008 winner of Best Chef Northwest. Since Café Juanita opened in 2000, they continue to successfully emulate northern Italian cuisine. Their regional influence comes across in dishes like risotto manticato, a buttery, cheesy risotto, and ravioli d'api, a pasta shape that originated in the north, per Italy. Along with specific nods to Italian cooking traditions, Café Juanita's menu attempts to be accommodating with diet-specific tasting menus. There are menus for pescatarians, vegetarians, vegans, and omnivores. Unfortunately, all diners will have to pay at least $140 per person to eat. If you choose to drink, you will get to sample a range of wines from the Pacific Northwest. Even hard-to-please Yelpers have a difficult time finding something to complain about at Café Juanita, so it's definitely one of the most impressive Italian joints in the U.S. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about amazing culinary experiences are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.